everyone, welcome back. Or if you're just joining, my name is Maya and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm posting content on scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos, which I'm publishing weekly. People have varied feelings about shopping the secondary market for MS scarves, mainly out of authenticity concerns, which are completely valid. I do have a video on my top tips for weeding out the fake, so be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. Of course, the easiest way to ensure that you're getting an authentic Hermes scarf is pretty simple. Buy it at one of their boutiques or directly from their website. But what happens if you missed a design or colorway from a past season? This is where the secondary market comes in. I will say that probably about 25% of my collection is from the secondary market. In some cases, the scarves are what I'd call gently pre-owned and in others, unworn, sometimes with tags, from collectors who end up not wearing the scarves and reselling them when they're making room in their collections for more. So in today's video, let's do a little shopping, specifically on eBay, where I'll take a look at some listings and walk you through some of the key things that I consider when evaluating a potential buy. This first listing I picked because I wanted to show you a few immediate red flags. This is supposedly for a 140 centimeter silk twill that's new with tags. If you shop Hermes scarves at all, you probably already know that the GM silks these days retail for 930 US dollars or more. So first question, why would somebody list something like this, supposedly new, at such a significant discount? The description really doesn't tell me anything substantive, but for giggles, let's dig a little more. In this case, the seller has posted seven photos, one of which is from Hermes, to convince me that this is the real deal. And by the way, eBay sellers can post up to 12 photos without any added charge. This one didn't. And by the way, that black mark on the tag could be a sale stamp, but I'm not sure. And anyways, that wasn't disclosed in the listing either. So that's two more strikes in my mind. If that hasn't already eliminated this as a possibility for you, let's look at the seller's feedback. They have nine so far, most of which was gained as a buyer. And as far as we can tell, they have seller feedback for only one item that sold for less than $30. So bottom line for this one, there are just too many red flags to bother with this listing. Move on. This one is for a highly collectible design, so why not let's take a look. I do like that the seller has posted 11 out of 12 photos with several close-ups of the scarf design as well as the hems and care tag. The fact that it comes with a box doesn't necessarily mean it's authentic, but I do appreciate that they did disclose the box wear in the listing. Okay, next let's look at the seller feedback. While they do have a 100% rating, it does concern me that what they've sold have been fairly low value items. I didn't scroll through all of the feedback, but you can see at least based on this feedback, all the items have generally been under $40. And in this listing, based on bid activity, it's already at several hundred dollars. Personally, I would move on from this listing as well, based on the current bid and the fact that I'm not convinced about the seller being trustworthy. Buyer beware on eBay, always. This listing is for another collectible and highly counterfeited design that I'd like to show you for some red flags as well. It's listed at $600, and for that, I expect to see a lot of photos of what I'm potentially buying. This seller posted five, one of which is a blurry alleged receipt. So far, not looking good. Then, if I look at their feedback as a seller, again, mostly low value items, not worth the time. This listing is for another highly collected design from a few seasons ago. While it's nearly twice something from the current season, it's generally at market price for this design within the secondary market. I like that the seller has provided 12 out of 12 photos for the listing with lots of close-ups of the hems and design. 
I also wanted to highlight the sale stamp and the scarf corner, which was also disclosed in the listing. So far, so good. Now take a look at the seller feedback. From what we can see here, they've been selling quite a few Hermes items, ranging from a few to several hundred dollars. Still looking positive. So if this is something I really wanted, I would reach out to the seller to ask about the scarf weight without the box, which for a 90 centimeter silk twill should be at least 65 grams or 2.3 ounces. If it's a reputable seller, they're going to respond and give you the weight. If they say they don't know or make an excuse, I've had people tell me they don't have a postage scale to weigh the scarf or they don't know how, move on. But if they do give you the right weight, I would definitely feel more confident about the purchase. Plus, now you have written documentation of what the seller claims the weight to be should you need to file a dispute with eBay. The first thing I do on receipt of a scarf I've bought in the secondary market is always to weigh it, just to be sure. Here's a listing for another collectible design, less so than the Alice Shirley one I just showed you, but no less worthy of collecting in my mind. I'm a huge Annie Fevre fan and actually have this design myself. Starting with the photos, I like that the seller used 11 of the 12 possible slots to show multiple close-ups of the scarf and hems. You can really see the evenness of the stitching in the rolled hems. Next, we'll look at the seller feedback. And the sales here have been for multiple Aramis items and transactions in several hundreds of dollars. All good signs. This is another one where if I was interested in the scarf, I would contact the seller to check the scarf weight. This listing is for another scarf considered a grail by some that I wanted to show you for its many red flags. Just at first glance, this is already priced at the high end of market value for this design. Looking at the photos, there are only six posted and I hope you can see what is a very obvious fake. Not only is one of the photos quite blurry, but look at how poorly the hems are sewn and the puckering of the fabric. On top of that, the seller literally has one feedback for an item less than $50. This is the kind of listing I would report to eBay. Here's another grail scarf listing, which while expensive, isn't completely out of line with current market prices for this design. In this case, the seller has used all 12 out of the 12 photo slots available with plenty of close-ups of the design and hems, which I totally appreciate. In the description, the seller does say that she has tried it on, but didn't wear it, and based on the photos, that appears likely to be true. Next, looking at the seller feedback, like the other good ones I've highlighted, the sales here have been for multiple Hermes scarves with transactions in the hundreds of dollars, which is a good sign. The other thing I wanted to highlight about this seller is the other items for sale. There are eight other items, all of which are Hermes scarves. I didn't go into each of the listings, but this seller looks like a collector who's worn some of these scarves, but many not. My guess is that each of these listings would have the same level of detail and disclosure as the one we just looked at. This is another one where if I were interested in the scarf, I would contact the seller to check the scarf weight. Here's another listing for a, a highly collected Alice Shirley design. This is also generally at market price for this design within the secondary market. I think it's positive that the seller has used 11 of the 12 photo slots to show the item for sale. The seller does describe it as mint, and I would guess from this photos that this has been worn, but it still looks promising at this point. Now, looking again at the seller feedback, from what we can see here, they've sold several Hermes items, ranging from a few to several hundred dollars, which again is positive. Also, like the last listing I showed you, the seller has other Hermes items currently for sale, which are some other collectible designs. So if I were really interested in this scarf, this is another one where I would contact them to ask about the scarf weight before bidding. I chose this listing because it's a design available in the current season. 
several immediate red flags. Number one, they don't list the name of the scarf or its artist. Maybe they don't know it, but that immediately gives me pause. Number two, they only provide two photos, one of which is a box. And number three, a zero feedback seller. I'd move on. Here's a past season scarf that is still available in at least two colorways on the U.S. Hermes website when last I checked. In this case, the seller posted 11 photos, giving a decent close-up of the scarf and its hems. Recent seller feedback is not Hermes specific, but another designer and transactions ranging from several hundred to a few thousand dollars, which is positive. Also looking at the other items for sale, you can still see several Hermes scarves and accessories. My guess is that this is another collector, and if I were interested in the scarf, I would reach out to check on the scarf weight and this as well. You may recognize this scarf design, which is from the current season. I chose this listing for a few reasons. First, let's look at the photos. So this seller only provides six photos, but there are some great close-ups of the hems, artist signatures, and the design. This scarf looks store fresh, which is consistent with their description. A look into their feedback also shows a track record of selling Hermes items from a few hundred dollars to thousands of dollars. This looks to me like a consigner. So even though this is a new scarf priced $100 below retail, it's not something that would raise a red flag for me. This too is one I would contact the seller about the scarf weight and possibly additional photos if it were something I was interested in. So a few closing thoughts about shopping for Hermes scarves on eBay. First, you should always feel comfortable asking a seller for more photos, especially if you have specific questions on areas of the scarf they haven't shown in the listing. And if they don't respond or aren't willing to work with you, move on. Second, buying in a marketplace like this is very much a buyer beware situation. There are trustworthy sellers out there, but unfortunately, there are also plenty who would gladly take your money for a counterfeit. Do your due diligence. Third, if you do buy something, always, always weigh the scarf when you get it. Again, for a 90 centimeter silk twill, it should be at least 65 grams. And if you don't have a postal scale, they're not that expensive and really a small investment for peace of mind. So I'd highly re recommend getting one. I put a link in the description for a postal scale like I use if you're interested. Fourth, eBay does have money back guarantees. While I've never had to use this service for an Hermes scarf, from experience with other returns, I can say they pretty consistently tend to side with the buyers. So it is absolutely possible to find some hidden treasures at great prices out there. You just have to be careful. So there you have it. Some tips on what I look for when shopping for Hermes scarves in a secondary market like eBay. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other Hermes how-tos and reviews, scarf knot tutorials, and more. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time.